All right, we have Lemon, who owns a building used in business. So Lemon's building is worth $800,000, and it has an adjusted basis of $500,000. He exchanges the building for another building owned by Lime. Lime's building is worth $950,000, but is subject to a $150,000 liability. Lemon assumes $150,000 debt and uses Lime's building in his business after the exchange. What is Lemon's realized gain or loss, recognized gain or loss, and basis of the building received? So these three questions, whenever you first read a question, a problem, right? Any accounting class, any tax course, whatever it is, law school course, doesn't matter, CPA exam, bar exam, whatever. First thing you should always look at is, you know, what exactly you have to do or what party, right? It says, what is Lemons? So that's, that's first thing to understand is it's asking about Lemon because we have two parties here, right? We've got Lemon and we've got Lime. So that's important to understand. You've got two parties, Lemon and Lime. We're only asked about Lemon here. Also, the question's asking us for realized gain or loss, which I'm going to put number one, recognized gain or loss, number two, and the basis of the building. Now, I conveniently put these in the question, but if you were doing a problem, let's say I didn't give you, um, I just gave you the problem up to Lime's building, as, um, Lime's building in his business after the exchange. That's the last part of the problem I told you. But I said, tell me the tax consequences for Lemon. You would want to go through these three things anyways. So if you have some type of simulation on the CPA exam or some you know, long problem where law school exam, whatever it is, you know, for those of you going to law school, and it just asks you for the tax consequences to one party, they want you to kind of like tell them like what you think is important. So I'm kind of helping you with that and telling you those things. So we're going to go in that order. But before we do that, because this is the first problem, and with like-kind exchanges and non-recognition rules, there's lots of stuff going on. There's lots of numbers, lots of pieces of property, liabilities, lots of things. So whenever we do the first problem, we always try to draw it out. And the reason why I show you this is because students in the past have told me, I understand the rules and how everything works together, but I always mess up the problem. I always get it wrong because I just don't understand what's going on. So the first thing to do is understand, hey, what is Lemon getting? What's Lime getting? You know, what's going on economically? And that will help you with the problem because everything that follows the rules, yeah, you can learn the rules, but you have to understand what's going on to apply the rules properly. So let's draw over here. Let's do some, uh, some colors. We've got lemon and we've got lime. Let's just read the problem, right? Lemon owns a building used in his business. Lemon's building is worth $800,000, adjusted basis $500,000, exchanges a building for another building owned by Lime. So we know that Lemon's building is going to Lime. We know that, right? And we also know that Lemon's building is worth 800,000 and has an adjusted basis of $500,000. Lemon is exchanging the, exchanging the building for another building owned by Lime. So we know that Lime is giving up a building as well And we know the fair market value of Lyons Billing is $950,000. Now, note, nowhere in the problem, we're, we're not told Lyons basis in the building. But the question is asking about Lemon. So do we need to know what Lyons basis is in Lyons Building? No. We would only need to know that if we were determining the consequences to Lyme, which we're not doing. So we don't need to worry about that. We also are told that there is a $150,000 debt on Lime's building, and Lemon assumes that debt. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I put that under the building, and I'm going to note in yellow, I'm going to circle the debt to show you that, hey, that is what, that's being taken on by Lemon. Yes, it's on Lime's building, and I'm circling in yellow because it's, it's being taken on by Lemon. Lemon is responsible for that debt. So we've drawn a picture of what's going on, right? We've got lemon and lime, this transaction. Another thing to note is that lemon owns the building, lemon's building, lemon owns it. 
It's a business building. And we're also told that Lemon takes on the liability and uses Lime's building in his business. So uses in Lemon's business. That's what they mean. So Lemon is going to use this in business as well. That's obviously going to be important later on. So here's what's going on. Make sure you understand what Lemon's getting, right? Lemon is getting, the item's coming from Lime. Lemon is getting a building worth $950,000 and taking on $150,000 of debt. And Lemon's giving up a building worth $800,000 and a basis in it of $500,000. So later problems, this gets a little bit more complicated. There's a lot more liabilities going on. There's cash, you know, going from one person to the other. So use this kind of format to help you understand, okay, what each party is getting. So let's go now and look at the realized gain or loss on the calculation, right? And remember, we're focusing on, on Lemon. Remember that realized gain or loss is amount realized minus adjusted basis. And again, we're focusing here specifically on lemon. Lemon's amount realized, lemon's adjusted basis, not limes. We need to determine the formula again for amount realized. Amount realized is actual cash received, I'm just gonna put a dollar sign, plus constructive cash, also known as liability relief, plus the fair market value of non-cash property. So remember, by the way, whenever you have a sale or exchange or involuntary, or disposi other disposition, involuntary conversion, whatever it is, of property, right? We have property here, building and building and property. You always got to go through the three steps. Step one is to calculate, realize gain or loss. Step two, recognize gain or loss. And step three, character. We're not focusing on character in this problem. We're just going to go up to the recognize gain or loss. But what we're doing here is we're starting with realize gain or loss. Why? That's our starting point, the gateway to all property transactions. Okay. Let's determine Lemon's amount realized. So looking at what Lemon's getting, is Lemon getting any cash? No, right? Lemon gets... No actual cash. What about liability relief or constructive cash? That would be if Lemon has a liability on the building, on Lemon's building, and Lime takes that on. We don't have that either, right? You don't see that anywhere. What about the fair market value of non-cash property? Yes. Lime, Lemon, sorry, Lemon is getting Lime's building has a value of $950,000. Now, I didn't put selling expenses into our amount realized, and that's because in these problems for non-recognition, I don't have any selling expenses, but you would subtract those out if you had them. You'd subtract those away, but you don't have to worry about those in these problem, this problem set. Okay, so Lemon's amount realized is $950,000 using that formula. Now, we subtract away Lemon's adjusted basis in the problem. Adjusted basis is the adjusted basis of all property given up. Amount realized is what Lemon's getting, Adjusted basis is what Lemon's giving up. So, so think of economic outflows. Well, looking at our picture, right? Lemon, is Lemon giving up any actual cash? No. What about constructive cash? So any cash, constructive cash paid? Yeah, right, right here. Remember I circled this $150,000 debt? So constructive cash taken on by Lemon is $150,000. Finally, is Lemon giving up any property? Yes. Lemon is giving up Lemon's building. And we look at the basis. So amount realized, we use fair market value. For the adjusted basis, we use the bases of items. For liabilities, it's just the, they're, they're going to be equal. The face value and the base are going to be equal. So this is going to be 500000 here, right? Again, we use the $500,000 adjusted basis of the item. So we have adjusted basis total of $650,000. So the realized gain or loss on this transaction, right, between lemon and lime is $300,000. So I'll draw a little line here to break this up. So now we go 
to our second element, which is calculating the recognized gain or loss. Remember, the way the tax law works is when we have property transactions, we always calculate the realized gain or loss first. Right? Any property transaction, you calculate the realized gain or loss first. Amount realized minus just a basis, boom. We've got $300,000 realized gain or loss. Then you ask, okay, that $300,000 realized gain or loss, any of that can be recognized? And the way to, to consider that issue or address that issue is to ask, are there any non-recognition rules out there that potentially can apply? Now, the time I'm filming this video in class, you know, we've only covered just this one non-recognition rule, but if you're studying for the CPA exam or other classes or whatever, you have to consider all the non-recognition rules. So all we can really ask is, we only know about not the uh, like-kind exchange rule. Does it qualify for like-kind exchange? And that also kind of makes sense because we know, okay, real property for real property, that's what's going on. So we ask, does lemon, because that's what we're focusing on here, not lime, lemon. Does lemon qualify for non-recognition? We go through our elements, right? Is, there, is lemon giving up real property used in trade or business? Yes, right? Lemon is giving up lemon's building, which was used in business. And then solely for, Lemon is getting a building that's going to be used in business. So real property for real property, both used in business, and it can be used for business or investment. It just can be personal. You could change it up. One could be business, one could be investment. As long as no personal, it's going to qualify. We're going to see later problems where Lemon is going to get things other than, than like-kind property, like cash or liability relief or non-cash property, stuff like that. You might be wondering, what happens if Lemon gives up non-like-kind property? For example, in this problem, Lemon is giving up Lemon's building to get Lime's building, but also giving up liability taken on, right? Or taking on liabilities. Well, this is a, this is a unique situation. If the taxpayer only receives like-kind property and the only property they give up is like-kind property and liability relief with respect to, with respect to that like-kind property, um, that they take on, then we just ignore it. Because when you do have non-cash property or non-like-kind property being given up, that also affects the, prob the problem. We'll see that later on as well. So we pretty much just ignore the fact the, um, the liability is taken on for purposes of the rules for determining if it's non -rec no recognition or not. We meet all three criteria. Again, Lemon is giving up real property used in business and getting real property used for business and solely for, and the, again, the Liability taken on has nothing to do with the problem. So what does that mean? That means that Lemon's recognized gain or loss is zero. Zero recognized gain or loss. What we do at this point, because remember, we want to make sure that you ace your specific question, CPA exam, my exam, whatever it is. We haven't got to step three yet, but that's fine. Between step one and step two, we're going to calculate what we call the suspended gain or loss. The suspended gain or loss is step one minus step two. So step one, of course, was a $300,000 gain minus step two, which is zero, gives us a $300,000 suspended gain. We call it suspended gain. That's going to be important for checking our work later on. So keep that in mind. Okay, so we're done with step two. and We're also done with our process of uh, calculating the suspended gain or loss. So now we've finished with step three. And step three is to calculate the adjusted basis of the new building that Lemon receives. The formula for that, we take the old adjusted basis, so the old or the basis in Lemon's old building, plus any money paid minus money received plus any gain recognized minus loss recognized. And that gives us the basis of the new item. So the old adjusted basis, we find that here, right? That's Lemons Building's basis. $500,000, 500K. Does Lemon pay any money in this problem, actual or constructive? Yes, right? We've got $150,000 of debt 
on Lions Building that Lemon takes on. So we're going to add into that $150,000 of constructive money paid. So that's liabilities taken on or actual money paid, either one. Is there any actual or constructive money received? Right, constructive money being liability relief? No. Not in this problem. We'll see it later. Does Lemon recognize any gain or loss? No. Right? Zero. So this is going to be plus zero minus zero. This means the basis in the new building is $650,000. So we're finished with step one, step two, step three, and we've answered all of what we're required to in problem one. Before we finish the problem, though, we've got one last thing to do, and that's check our work. So if you use the long formula, if you use the long formula, which is what I recommend you do, the long formula for calculating the basis, which is right here. There's a shortcut, but this is the long formula. You're able to check your work. The way you check your work is we unrealistically, hypothetically, we're going to say Lemon, the next day, is going to sell the new building that Lemon received for the fair market value according to this problem. So that means that Lemon is selling the building Lemon just got, Lime's building. And Lemon's going to sell it for cash. Ignore all liabilities on it. Just assume that Lemon's going to get the cash amount and there's no liabilities even though there was liabilities in the problem. So remember, whenever we sell property, we got to do amount realized minus adjusted basis. So I'm just going to abbreviate amount realized minus adjusted basis. Okay. This is easy. Amount realized, actual cash received by Lemon in this hypothetical transaction. The fair market value, which is $950,000. Any constructive cash or li liability relief? No, because again, we assume there's no liabilities involved. Any fair market value non-cash property? No, it's just straight sale for cash and there's no selling expenses. So amount realized, 950. Minus the adjusted basis of the property after this transaction? Well, we just calculated it. According to our calculations, $650,000. So that gives us a realized gain or loss of $300,000. Now, whenever you sell property for cash, straight cash, there's never, ever, ever going to be a non-recognition rule that will apply. And the reason why is because, remember, to have a non-recognition rule, you need two themes. Your economics have to be the same, which Congress does not view that the same. But even easier is liquidity. You have $300,000 cash, you can pay your taxes, right? right? If part of that is taxable, Right, you have $300,000 gain at the point in your tax return, and you have a 30% tax rate, $90,000. So you use $90,000, $300,000, and boom, you got $210,000 cash left. Right? So there's not going to be a non-recognition rule. That means that the $300,000 realized gain or loss will be recognized, and now you can determine, hey, the suspended loss that we calculated here, does this equal? And it does. $300,000 equals $300,000. So to check your work, Realized gain or loss that you calculate should equal your suspended gain or loss. If it is not, you've calculated it incorrectly and you've done something wrong. So we're going to go over later or more problems in the future, in future videos. Use this one as your baseline though because they will go a little bit faster.